So Beautify 3 is now in beta 6. So let's go and plug it in and see if it's production ready or not. So let's get ourselves up and running on Beautify with Nuxt 3. So the first thing that we need to do is install the next version of Beautify. So let's npm install that. Let's just see what that's given us. So we've got Beautify at beta 6 currently. You also need SAS installed as a dev dependency. I've already got it installed here. So we need to go and create a plugin to add Beautify into our Nuxt 3. So over in our plugins folder, let's go and create a Beautify plugin. We import some various different bits and pieces from the Beautify library that we've just installed. We then create a Nuxt plugin. We create some options and we then add that in using a view app use statement into Nuxt. We can go over to our Nuxt config to go and sort out the CSS. For that, we just need to add in the lib styles and the SAS file for Viewify. Further down in the Nuxt config, we need to add a bit more to the build pipeline. So we need to add build and transpile and get Viewify to transpile. And we also need this setting here um, for Veet. If we want to use the MDI um, material design icons library as well, we need to install the at MDI font and add in a bit more CSS as well. So this is a kind of optional step. Uh, it depends on not if you use these things, but if you do, this is how you can get them to work. So then you can add in that CSS. So at MDI font, CSS, material design icons, and that adds that CSS in for you. Now that we've got the bones of it set up, we can go over to our page and we've got our contact page, which is where we use our Beautify form normally, or what we did in our Nux2 app. So this is the form that we had previously. And we can see that we need some variables. So we need a valid variable. We need some form data where we're going to store some stuff. We need a busy flag to indicate whether or not it's um, loading or not. And we need a method to actually get called when we submit the form. And we need some validation functions. So let's go and add some of this into our script just to make all this work. We can add in the various flags that we need. We can also add in our form data variable or object where we store the values that are actually populated in the form and any errors associated with it. This would eventually get called across to the API and any errors in the API get populated in there. And let's add in some validation functions. So our required function just checks that you've entered something. And if you haven't, it tells you that you need to enter something. And because I've got an email address in this form. I've also got an is valid email validation function. And then just for testing purposes to create a bit of a delay, like it's an API being called, I've got a sleep utility function that will sleep for a defined number of milliseconds. And then finally, I've got my submit function. So my submit form basically just sets the busy flag to true waits for a set period of time calling that sleep method, resets the form, basically saying that it's okay and it's accepted all those values. So we reset the form back to their default values and then finally set that flag off to false. So that gives us a kind of illustration of how the form might behave when we actually get to the real world. Uh, I need to go and add some styles into this as well. So let's just copy my style across as well for the contact form and that should be all we need. So let's run this up. So that's up and running. So what I've got is the Nuxt 2 site that I've built with Beautify 2 on the right hand side and the new Nuxt 3 app built with Beautify 3 on the left so that we can see just some of the differences between the two and straight out of the box you can see that there's some some coloring issues. Um, we've got some backgrounds now on these whereas we didn't have those with the default versions of Beautify. When you click on name, the label goes up, but you'll notice that when I click out of name, I don't get exactly the same behavior. So here, when I click in and click out, 
I get the validation gets run here when I click in and click out. The validation isn't being run. So that's a definite difference between Beautify 2 and 3. So we're going to have to go and have a, a little fix on that. So you can see as I click down all of these, whereas if I click down all of these, I get my validations coming up and I can't send the form until I correct all those validations. Here, the, the send is also disabled, but it's not gray, so it's not very obvious that it's disabled. If I actually go and type something in here and click out, so if I type something in there, you can see then that my email address validation does actually fire. And if I clear out a field, you can see that the validation does actually fire. So it's not overly useful the way that um, the validation works now in Beautify 3. It looks like it's gone to more of a lazy style of, of validation, but let's see if we can actually go and fix that. Oh, and incidentally, I, I forgot to show you there that I've got a V icon there. So this is what I was talking about earlier with the MDI icons. So that's where this star is coming from. So just if you want to use those sorts of icons, then you need to do that MDI icon library as well. So let's see if we can fix that validation issue. So what we need to do is put in a ref to each of these fields. We can add a ref for the name field, a ref for the email, and a ref for the inquiry. And then now that we can get hold of the actual field itself, we can get hold of the blur event. So this is what gets called when you effectively leave the field and we can get hold of the ref's name and call a validate function on that to actually manually call those validations when we get that blur event triggering. This is something different that we didn't have to do with Beautify 2, but let's just see where this gets us. So refs.name, refs.email and refs dot inquiry save that and let's jump back over and see what we now get so let's just refresh the page so that we start again from scratch and now if i go into name and tab out of it you can see that we i get that blur event firing and so now i'm now getting exactly the same behavior that i got for beautify 2 but you'll notice that when I do that on the inquiry field, it didn't work. So the blur event is not working on the inquiry field. And if we look at the debug trace, what we can see is refs inquiry validate is not a function. So there seems to be a validate function on these text fields. But on a text area, if we jump back over to the code, the inquiry is a text area, whereas the other fields are text fields. So there's a validate function on a text field, but not on a text area, it seems. So that seems to be a bit of an inconsistency or a gap in Beautify 3, which is a bit of a shame. Let's see if we can work around this issue as well and get the same behavior out of the inquiry field. So what I'm going to do is add in a validate function. So in here, I've got a function called validate that takes the field and somewhere where it can store the result of running those validations is how this is supposed to work. And a lot of this has come from the Beautify library around that validate function that's on the text field. So it iterates through the field's rules. And if it needs to actually go and call the validate function, then it will do. If it's already reached the maximum number of errors, then it basically jumps out. So we then get hold of a the actual validation function. We call the validation function with the new value that's being requested. If the result is true, we carry on, we jump around and go to the next validator. If it isn't, we check if it's returned as a string or not a string. And if it hasn't returned as a string, because that's what we would expect, then that's a problem. So there's a console warn. Again, all this is standard Beautify functionality. 
And then finally, with that error message, we're pushing that into the results if it's an array, or we're just setting that as the string if results is not an array. So now with that in place, we can go and change the blur function on our inquiry. So rather than calling that validate, we can blur and call our validate now, passing it the inquiry field and also where we want to store the errors. So against the inquiry form data field. And one last thing that we need to set is the error property on the text area field. And we just check if errors has got any length. If there's anything in the errors, then that flags that this field is in error. So it should show the error message is all this needs to do. So we need to do that manually ourselves as well, because we're taking over the, the validation functionality here. So let's save that and jump back over here. Reset this again and we click in name, we get an error, we click in email, we get an error, we click in inquiry. Yay, we get an error. So all three fields are now correctly validating and populating and we're seeing no errors in our console over here. So that is awesome. So now we can actually see what we're doing. So if we type in some dummy information to get rid of all of those, you can see that as I type in that last field and the validation clears, my button goes to a deeper color. and It's now enabled and I can send that. That will sleep for five seconds. So that's the behavior you get. And then it nicely resets the form back to whatever it was, which is exactly what we had with our NUX2 contact form, which is good. So just to look at how we can override some of these colors, obviously a purple button with all of this blue kind of coloring that we've got doesn't really fit with our site. So let's go and have a look at how we can handle colors with Beautify. Back over in our plugin where we've got this, we can add in some extra bits and pieces in here. So we can add in theme definition from Beautify and then we can create our own theme is what we're going to do. So we create a custom theme, which is a type theme definition that we just imported. We turn off dark mode and we're changing our primary color to some kind of blue ish color. Then we can go and add that theme into the beautify configuration by specifying the theme. So I specify the default theme is now my custom light theme, which is that and also add my custom light theme into the themes collection for Beautify. So save that. And if I come back over to the page, refresh the page, you can see that's now gone to a light blue and let's give it some valid values. So that valid email address, some inquiry and our button now goes to the nice color and blends in much better with our site. So that's a kind of quick way that you can get some coloring into match your website. So that's it. We are up and running with Beautify 3 on Nuxt 3. And for me, it's good enough for production. So I'm going to give it the tick that it's good enough for production. Your mileage may vary depending on your usage. If you're using Beautify a bit more extensively than I am, then you may well run into issues. And uh, I'd be interested to hear on your experiences on that. So let me know in the comments below. And with that, I'd like to say thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.